So there's this really cool time between sunset and when night falls entirely where the world is a little bit hazy. There's not really, you know, brilliant sunset colors in the sky anymore. It's all leaked away and the world is mostly blue. It's not quite dark yet. It's just blue and you can kind of see things, but not really. That's called blue hour and we're gonna paint it. Hello my friend, this is day four of painting the wilderness light and today we are focusing on blue hour. So before I started my research into the times of day while writing my book, Mastering Light in Watercolor, I didn't know blue hour had a name for it. I knew about twilight, I knew about golden hour, I knew about night and day obviously, but as I was looking more into how light you know, carries throughout the day, I realized there's a term for that time of day when everything is hazy. It's not it's not night, but there's no there's no real light left either. And I just think blue hour is one of the coolest parts of day to paint. That's because most of the world during blue hour is cast in blue, right? A lot of the colors are really muted, but especially when you contrast that with you know either artificial light or uh, different light sources than the sun the blue contrasted against say like the orange of a fire can evoke really really cool scenes this is another one of those projects that probably looks really intimidating and i just want to say it's okay to simplify if you don't even want to paint the fire that's fine because the point of practicing blue hour is to practice painting muted scenes, right? Where we can still see some light, but everything is just kind of tinged with blue. So if you don't do anything else, um, just make sure to practice painting everything so it's a little bit blue. All right, let's dive in. Okay, mini pep talk before we start painting. This is gonna be messy. We're painting fire, which is notoriously tricky. And if there, I, I highly encourage you to experiment I highly encourage you to look at this as a study, right? We're just practicing, we're experimenting, we're practicing these techniques and we're practicing courage, exercising our muscles so that we can tolerate even more discomfort so that we can stretch our creative skills even further. So to start, we're going to do the sketch. And I did a line at the top, like a third of the way down, that's gonna be like the horizon line. And then I'm painting the stones around where the fire is going to be. So that's along like the bottom third toward the right hand corner. Um, I'm just painting them in kind of like, basically like a line with some of the stones that curve a little upward. So it kind of forms like an, you know, like a C where the little tails kind of point upward, right? We're trying to, to give a sketch for the stones for the bonfire, just so we have an idea of where to paint the fire. And then right under that top horizon line, I'm gonna paint a little wave line for the shore. That's where, so that little strip in between those two pencil lines, that's where the ocean is going to be. And then I'm gonna paint some rocks. Really uh, simple, uh, big, like one really big one, a few kind of medium ones. It does not matter what shape these are. It does not matter. Uh, like they're supposed to look natural and rough. That's what rocks are supposed to look like. So, um, this is the general scene, right? Where the bonfire, it's kind of a small bonfire. Can it be a bonfire if it's small? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the fire is going to be, the fire in the beach is going to take up about two thirds of the scene. And then the ocean and the rocks and the sky take up the top one third, right? Okay. So, we are going to start painting the lightest portion first. And the lightest portion is going to be the middle of the fire because the middle of the fire is going to be um, basically white. Like when you go to the middle of the fire, it's the brightest part of the fire. And because we don't want the orange and the yellow of the fire to mix with like the muted blues and browns we're going to make for the beach. Um, after I got my scene wet, I just tapped like a circle around the area where I think my fire is going to go to just kind of like keep the yellow contained. So after that, I got some really, really, really watery gold ochre. And with my size six brush, I'm just 
tapping in the gold ochre so that I'm getting some color in around the air, like around the area and the shape where I want the fire to go. And because I tapped with my with my towel beforehand, that gold ochre is not escaping out into the rest of the scene, right? Which is exactly what I want. So I started with really, really light gold ochre, and then I went back in and got uh, put a little bit more paint in that in my, you know, gold ochre well or whatever, and got a slightly darker value gold ochre, and I tapped it around the center of the fire. Because again, the center of the fire is going to be the the widest part. That's the, the lightest part is where uh, is going to be in the middle of the fire. And so we're kind of using negative space here to paint darker orange and darker yellows around like the crackly edges of that fire. So this is going to be kind of like a dance between adding more paint and then using a thirsty brush to lift some of the paint. And um, I'm also going to kind of extend some of the wet area beneath the rocks so that we can get some of the glow of the fire reflecting underneath. It does not matter where that glow is. It can just be like kind of sporadically, just like slight little waves underneath the fire, um, underneath the rocks. And then I'm going to go back in while this fire is still wet. So it's really important here. I'm using the wet on wet technique for right now where I'm adding paint and then I'm lifting it, adding paint and lifting it. And I'm gradually growing a little bit darker and I'm going to grow a little bit redder. Also, I'm going to add a little bit of Scarlet Lake, which is like a red orange color. Um, so if you don't have Scarlet Lake, you can just mix a red orange color, uh, I'm going to add some add some Scarlet Lake to my yellow ochre. So I'm not adding like directly red orange. I'm just kind of mixing like a more brighter orange. And then I'm using, I switched to my size two brush, which is a smaller brush. And I'm tapping it just inside um, where all of those other colors I was tapping. Notice I started as I'm tapping around that white area where the fire is, right? I started lighter and then I gradually grew darker and gradually grew more orange. And then I'm leaving that center space a little, like I'm leaving that center space white and um, adding a little bit of color just to make it look like there's like licks of flame. If you want your white space or your flames to be a bit higher, you can use a, a thirsty brush to lift even more of the paint and kind of make it more defined. At this point, if your paper is still wet, it's probably just damp. And so lifting on damp paper is going to give you even more defined shapes. But the point with fire and the reason why we're doing it this way of like a dance between adding a little bit and then removing a little bit and then making it darker around the edges and then making it lighter in the middle is fire is, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's chaotic and it doesn't keep to one shape ever, right, for longer than a millisecond, right? And so regardless of how you work this out, it's going to be okay. The main, the most important part is to keep the center mostly white and to keep the edges like a little bit darker so they look crackly. You can also use, like add a little tiny little bits of, um, of that yellow ochre or red orange just to like the white parts to give like little flames. You can also kind of push the paint up and then notice how it kind of, we have a dried paint line that looks like crackling flames almost. All of this is natural inherent to how watercolor dries. And so that's one of the benefit of painting fire with watercolor because you start with the wet on wet technique and then you slowly add a little bit more paint, just a little bit more paint. And then the dried paint lines kind of form this natural fire shape. Now, this is tricky. So if you're painting this and you're getting super frustrated, it's okay. If honestly, if the only thing that you do is you paint like a wet on wet orange blob just above the rocks where it's just kind of like you got your paper wet and then you tapped in some orange paint and just kind of let it naturally float upward and let like kind of let it dry in that natural watercolor shape that's okay too that's totally going to be fine I did a lot of like careful detail work with that smaller with my smaller paintbrush to try to capture the look of those flames but you don't have to do that you you definitely don't just like a splash of color is also going to look great 
So we have the fire and now I'm going to paint the sky and kind of like do a base layer for the sky and the ocean. And um, the way I'm doing that is I just got that top third of my scene wet. And then I did a mix of indigo and um, I added just a little bit of Mars black to indigo and I got it really, really watery so that um, from the top of the sky to like the bottom part of the ocean, we have this kind of muted blue for the sky and the ocean. So now I have that base layer for the sky. I have my fire going on. Now I'm going to start painting a base layer for the beach. And in order to get um, it's, it's blue hour, right? And so I'm trying to use really muted tones where during the day, the sandy color might be a little more orange or might be a little more vibrant. I'm trying to get kind of like a muted brown. And so I'm mixing, uh, I, I mixed a little bit of Mars black with gold ochre. And I got this kind of like you know, muted tan color, which is, it works great for a base layer. Then I'm going to add a little bit more blue because I don't want my sand to be like sandy. I, I want it to be a little tinged with blue, like tinged with cool gray because it's blue hour, right? Blue hour is that, is that hour between night and day where everything is just looks a little bit blue because it's not night. So you can see things, but it's also not day. So it's, you know, everything is just, it's a little more muted. It's kind of cast in with a blue tone, even though it still has color. Um, and so I'm adding a little bit of indigo to that gold ochre and Mars black mix. And then I'm just kind of using the wet on wet technique to create um, a really luminous sandy area around the fire. Notice I'm not getting my fire wet. I'm and, and in fact, if your paint ventures towards your fire, use a paintbrush to push it away. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to get this effect where like I'm using the wet on wet technique with all of these like different color mixes using different mixes of gold ochre and Mars black and indigo to make I don't want a flash, a flat wash here, right? I want some areas really shadowy and some areas kind of light. Um, but overall, I want it to be really muted, except for the areas where I can see the fire, except for, you know, where, where that yellow and orange glow is glowing on, on the ground. So, um, this is going to be super messy. The reason why I sped it up a lot is because it's okay if it's really messy, honestly. The, the idea is not to make it look any specific way. It's to make it look like there are lots of different shades happening in this muted, cool gray kind of color. So now I'm going to add some, you know, sand and, and a beach often like the sand looks bumpy, like there are lots of footprints, right? And so I'm kind of, I'm not comfortable like painting footprints necessarily. And so what I'm doing is just painting a bunch of random marks with really like the same kind of mixes that we've been doing with the gold ochre and the indigo and the Mars black, like different kind of uh, color mixes there. And I'm just m basically making random marks uh, with pretty light, watery paint, but on dry paper. So I'm using the dry brush technique, using kind of random marks and watery paint to add even more shadow and more texture because again we don't it doesn't need to look realistic it doesn't need to look exactly like a photo or exactly like a footprint we just need to imply that there's some kind of texture here right that the sand is not you know smooth and if it looks more like rocks like at this point it, it almost kind of looks more like rocks than it does like sand that's okay too I'm just trying to add texture trying to add contrast to the scene and um, I'm wanting to make sure that the sand by the ocean and then the sand on the edges of the scene it's darker than the sand immediately around the fire okay so those are the most important things now I'm going to paint the rocks by the bonfire. And what we're going to do is use a darker version. So this is Mars black, Mars black mixed with like just a little bit of indigo. Um, so I'm painting some of these rocks that I sketched, right? But I'm leaving the sides of the rocks that are facing the fire. I'm leaving them dry so that I can add more gold ochre onto them so that it looks like some of the fire is like reflecting on these rocks, right? Because it's supposed to be, the fire is the only place where we're getting 
this bright orange light, right? So we're going to have some of the fire reflect on those rocks. And this is really detailed work. Some of these details you do not have to do. And then I just decided to add a little bit more gold ochre, like dry brush, um, jagged texture on top of the flames just to give them a little more structure you do not have to do that honestly from this point out all of the details I'm adding I just kind of thought hmm I wonder if it would look good if I added a little bit more shadow here so I'm adding a little bit more of this shadowy color and by shadowy color I just mean various mixes of what we already have on the palette right I'm adding a little bit um, more defined shadows immediately underneath the fire, adding a little bit more gold ochre um, by those shadows just to see how it looks. <laughs> like, I'm, I cannot stress enough that I am also experimenting. I am not painting this to say, this is exactly how you paint this perfectly. I'm showing you how I look at a scene and I paint it imperfectly because I'm also experimenting and that's what's so fun that's the like that's the fun part about looking at scenes like this that feel really difficult and just saying you know what I can't I don't know that I can do this perfectly but I definitely can do it imperfectly and so I'm gonna have fun doing it okay so now we're going to make our sky just a little bit more blue. So I got some really, really watery indigo and I painted the sky, another layer on top of the sky, making sure that it's more blue toward the top and gradually gets a little bit lighter toward the bottom. Then I am taking some of that indigo mix and I added just like a tiny, tiny bit of gold ochre to my indigo to make it almost like very slightly blue green. And um, I am doing, I'm using my size two brush and doing really choppy strokes. This is dry brush, right? So the paper is dry in the ocean so that I can paint the water and leave little strips of white. These are the crashing waves, right? This is the sea foam. Those strips of white that I'm leaving intentionally, that's the sea foam. And it does not matter where they are. The whole point is to leave some strips of white. And then I took, uh, I added also some darker indigo after I paint, after I, you know, painted around the strips of white just to make the ocean a little bit darker. But I wanted, I definitely leave behind some of the lighter blue green also. Then I'm going to go back in with, um, this is like indigo mixed with a little bit of Mars black and just doing the silhouette of the rocks. When I initially painted them, they didn't seem quite like they were dark enough. So I just added a little bit more darkness, especially to that big one. But the rocks are kind of like, it doesn't really matter what they look like. It just matters that they're there on top of the horizon. And then I decided to, especially to kind of balance out the darkness, since it's kind of the darkest places are kind of top heavy to balance out the composition. I'm going back in with some of this Mars black indigo mix and just in a few places, not very much, but in a few places, adding in some like darker marks to like strengthen the shadows on some of those foot footprints. And then at the last minute, I decided, well, maybe I'm going to make the area kind of under the fire and around the fire even darker. So it's um, more obvious that the fire is lighting the part of the beach that we can see. And this is one of the tricks, especially as you're painting during blue hour or you're painting during night, or you're trying to capture light generally, is if you find that you can't really make your light lighter, but it still doesn't look quite luminous, then make your darks just a little bit darker. And so I, I added a little bit of water around the area around the sun. And then I'm adding just um, some like, you know, fairly watery, a fairly watery mix of that indigo and Mars black so that I get a really a relatively dark shadow, uh, especially in the corners. But when I want it to gradually grow lighter, especially around the fire, so that we can see, you know, the effects of the fire on this um, on this scene. And I want to note, as I'm making these shadowy mixes, I'm using indigo in a lot of them because this is blue hour, right? I want everything to look like it's just tinged with blue except for that orange fire. So then I did a little bit more shadow in the sand just underneath the ocean as well. And now I'm done. Um, I, like I said, have been saying this is a very imperfect scene. 
it was something that I was a little nervous to try, but if you're nervous to try something, that means it is an excellent opportunity for you to practice courage, an excellent opportunity for you to practice discomfort, and even if your end result is not exactly what you were hoping for, you should celebrate because man doing scary things is hard and the more you do them the braver you're going to be in the future and the more you practice things like this the more the more you know surprises you'll find and discoveries you'll find so uh in thinking about the loved and learned portion of this scene um i one thing i really loved was uh, kind of the dance of the fire, right? Where we started out really light and kind of, it just kind of looked like like a mess, just like a splash of yellow and then gradually growing darker around the edges. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, I also really loved the, when I added the last thing, when I added that bottom shadow to contrast against the rest of the scene and make the fire look even lighter. I loved that so much. One thing that I would change or that I learned is the composition is a little bit wonky. Like I would probably move the rock a little bit to the side so it's not directly on top of the fire, just to make, to add a little bit more variation. Um, but honestly, I thought this was a really fun scene. I hope that you enjoyed watching this with me and you enjoy painting it. And I can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>